Hi, I'm John Fitzpatrick, I'm CEO and President of Fitzpatrick Hotels, New York. And John, uh, you're celebrating a big milestone this year, can you explain a bit more about that? Yeah, would you believe it's our 25th um, anniversary, I never thought I'd yeah. say it'd be 25 years in New York. Because a lot of people say to us, um, how long are you here? They think we're here for a long, long time, but I just remember walking the doors here in 1990. And um, so, thank God, it's been it's been great. And I have to say, due to a lot of the success is actually due to the support of the Irish, which is yeah. great. You know? And how hard was it to set up a hotel in New York? Was it a hard game to break into at that time? Yeah, it, you know, when you come from a place like Ireland into New York, it, it's a different world altogether. Someone says to me, it's like uh, this small fish in a big pond compared to the big fish in the small pond. Yeah. And, and it was true because we came here, nobody knew who we were. I mean, I remember even doing sales calls myself at the beginning because when we opened, first of all, we had to renovate. So from we bought it in June and we opened it, believe it or not, I can't believe it, in December. Now, we opened the hotel with no liquor license, so that was unusual to have an Irish hotel with no bar <laughs> license. But we did it and we got our liquor license in January. But we opened it and um, then we just saw that it was very difficult because, you know, when I was doing the travel agent calls myself, I'd go in. First of all, they couldn't get the name right. It was Fitzgerald. It was just Fitzgerald and um, Fitzpatrick. And I said, no, it's Fitzpatrick. And they were saying, no, it's Fitzgerald. So they were getting confused with me on the other hand. Yeah, right. Well, the highest, I think, that's the thing opening. I think to be the first Irish-owned hotel in New York City was a big achievement for us all. And as I said too, it just developed. And a lot of that was due to the support we got from the Irish because the atmosphere. You can open a hotel and you can have all the services you have. But if you don't have the atmosphere, and you know, I felt between the employees, some of them, a lot of them were Irish, and we can't get as many Irish as we used to because of the visa situation. But we still have a lot of Irish yeah. and working for us, and then the Irish customer too. It just gave that home away from home feeling, and that's what it tells. I mean, the likes. The first dignitary we had was Mary Robinson, who was president at the time, and then we had Mary McAleese. And first of all, then we had Albert Reynolds, who was the first teacher. Even Charlie Hall, he was at the <laughs> stage, and Charlie happened to be down in the wall off, where you always say. But curiosity was killing him, and I remember him. And that was the time he was keeping a low profile. But someone called me from the consulate and said, um, "The boss, as he was called, to prepare to wants to have a look." And I remember bringing him up to the penthouse because he just wanted to see the hotel, which was great. So looking back in those days, and then we've had every T-shirt stay with us, and they don't stay with us because they have to, because they can stay in any other hotel. But as long as they get the service, I hope they keep coming back to us. And it's been a great support from T-shirts down to. You know, people coming on holidays, shopping holidays, and it's good for us because being away from home, yeah. you walk into the bar and you actually see a few hours, you say hello to them, sure, it gets you going again, yeah. you know what I mean, it gets you out and And then we're very lucky with the, we've got some celebrities, I mean, Liam Neeson will walk in here and be glad to say, actually, he, um, he's, I got invited, I invited him to the 25th anniversary yeah. and he said, he gave me a beautiful letter and he said, you can use this for press because he we opened and um, the great story about him was I looked after his mother when she came Kitty and I was on the phone to her only a few weeks ago and I was back up in Belfast at the Irish Open and uh, she, she came in and stay here and he was calling in but he could call in at any time and just sit, have a cup of tea and move on it's that place where people can call in and it's hard to find a place like that in New York Is there a typical holiday maker from Ireland? What, what kind of market do you attract? It's funny it can be from first of all from corporate travellers come in all the time but at the, in the weekends you'll get a lot at the moment at June, July and August you get a lot of families and you know, the Irish families have come through here this summer because things are getting better they're either on the way to Florida or on the way back from summer they'll always have a few days in New York and to stay in Fitzpatrick's you know and it's just a, again the home from home I remember one I won't say her name, but just rang me last week. She says, the kid's with me. We're coming back from Florida, and they can't wait to get into your place because they feel home. That's, that's yeah. the beauty of it. And has access helped you? A lot more access now from Ireland to the United States. Great access. I mean, Aer Lingus, of course, the national airline, but you've got American Airlines, you've got United, you've got this new other airline now flying in too as well so there's so many they're flying from different locations you're flying from Newark you can go up to New Haven and so, so it's great so the doors are open and I think you know things are getting a lot better in Ireland now and things are traveling more again have you seen a pick up in the last couple of years in the last 12 months 12 months yeah 12 months. now also what's affecting us is the dollar because the dollar is very strong so you'll find someone saying well it's a little bit more expensive well it's not expensive it's just that the dollar's got stronger you know what I mean I mean, it's still the best place to come shop. And apart from the Irish, what, what, what kind of tourists do you, do you attract from around the world? Is it a lot of Americans or is there every, every country? 
you know, well, yeah, besides the Irish, we did a lot of English too because of us managing for a while one of the hotels that we had British Airways crew in. You know, with 14,000 airline crew, yeah. and over six, eight years we had that contract that, with that hotel before they sold it. Um, yeah, man, they, they told her parents, their families, and so it really helped us, that English market. Then also, when the recession hit Ireland, I had to say to myself, people, look, we've got to go to England, we've got to go to hit them, and we were hitting a lot of these big tour operators, so we become so well known out in, in England. So that's it, English, um, Italians, you get a few Italians and French, what's hitting us now, we just look at it, is China. China is a big, coming into New York City, and we are hitting the Chinese market now because I found out, and this is an interesting statistic, in 1970, Irish immigrants were the highest, the fourth highest in the living in New York, Irish descent. Yeah. Now we're number 40, and China, China is number two. So it's huge. I mean, New York has certainly changed. You've got to move with the times. You know what I mean? So, yeah. as we say, we're almost renovating here. We're about to finish our renovation here now. All the rooms, new furniture coming in, and then, then we start at Grand Central. It's a cycle that you got to keep going. You know and I mean? we're here on 59th Street. Grand Central was that a big, big baptism of fire to go from one hotel to a second hotel? And yeah. Well, look, be fair, it was my father's dream always to have a Fitzpatrick hotel in the States. That was yeah. his dream. And when I came out here, this was the first. And then we said we'd move. And but we never thought we'd be doing the second one in New York. This one, now don't get me wrong, it was tough to get off the ground, it was very tough. Because you're dealing with the chains, the big chains, the Hilton's and the Marriott's, and you know, Americans, they're just drawn to that. They're just drawn to that because they feel comfortable, like the Irish feel comfortable with Fitzpatrick. So you had to get over that, and that's a big, big uh, thing. But then it just took off so much that we found out we um, we had another one, never thought 12 blocks away we'd be up another Fitzpatrick. But 12 blocks in New York City is like another city. It's, yeah. Because there's nine to ten hotels between us today. And people want to be within two or three blocks of where they're going. But you're also like, you were a kind of boutique hotel before the boutique hotel idea came along. In that sense, you know, you were, you were a small operator, but it was very personal service in that sense. Yeah, I mean, there was some kind of boutique, they call themselves, yeah, we were the first boutique, and then the other hotels are fine, a boutique, but a boutique hotel with 400 rooms is not boutique, you know, you're, you're using the name, yeah. but, but you know, if I had 400 rooms here, could I, could we, shame my equipment, my operations director, could he, could he meet all the customers, no, but I could ring him at any time, and he'll say it, or I'll ring Chris, or I'll ring Robert, we know who stays, you know what I mean, we, and that's very important to know. And is, is it hard to get non-Irish staff who kind of, to get the Irish psyche in that sense, is it hard to train them up to, you know, acknowledge with the quirks of Irish people and what they want? Yeah, it, look, first of all, we mix an awful lot of nationalities here, and the Irish are great, there's something about the Irish, and we take 12 in what we call graduates from the college, we go in few in Shane, couple now we in November, and in few all the colleges, all over Ireland, north and south, and he'll pick 10 to 12 of them who would graduate in June and come out to us for a year. Don't take um, summer, what do you call it, the J, whatever, J1s. J1s. Yeah. Because look, be fair, the students are out for a bit of fun. Yeah. They're not really interested in yeah. the career. I got to make sure whoever works here is interested in the career. So these are all hotel graduates who want to work in the hotel business. And I got them for 12 months. So it gives us time to train them. And it's because the J1s, they come for a month and then they say two months and then they're gone. We need to, so we bring them out as well as the Irish staff we have here, and then they mix with the American staff. And the Americans figure out it's all about, to me, service. I said, you know what, guys, you can drop a tray of glasses, and I'll be mad for about 30 minutes. But what I really mad if I see a customer standing waiting to be checked in, somebody standing waiting to be served, that gets me going. It's all about service. You know? But you have a sit down check in, it's unusual in the sense it's not a it's not a big lobby and it's not a case of you have to stand in line, you know. You sit down, it's quite it's quite informal in that sense. But that's one of the reasons we did this, because if you know if I was a traveller, yeah. traveling is tough. So yeah. you're traveling to your port, you're lined up to check in, then you gotta to go to security and you're lined up, then you're lined up to get on the plane. And it's just such a hassle. So when they find me, and then they'll get a taxi here or whatever. So finally we get here, we want to give them the feeling you've arrived. And my idea was to sit down with a glass of lemonade or hot, hot, whatever it is in the, in the, in the winter. And then we'll sit there, you're here, we'll check you in. And it just gives people a bit right. Now let's relax. Because in hotels, I hate to see these hotels where you have automatic check-in. And you'll see them. Where you're lined up all along and you walk into your hotel and you see a red rope. you got to get behind it and stop. Checking in on the computer. I mean, that's not hotel business. I mean, my father has always told me, no matter how big you get, job, 
or how many hotels you have, remember, you're an innkeeper. And that kind of grounds you to say, you've got to make sure that you look after the customer. Yeah. Brilliant.